Hi everyone, my name is Rodrigo Tomas. I'm a senior applications engineer at Bosch Rexroth US. And today I will show you how to configure from scratch an Indra drive with MLD. Uh, MLD stands for Motion Logic Drive Based. Uh, and what it means is that the Indra drive has a motion controller on board. And I will show you like a very basic uh, motion profile so we are not gonna go deep into it I just really want to show you how to uh, to start it to get it started uh, I'll also take this opportunity to show HMI integration uh, and I'll show you how to create a very very basic uh, screen so for this training I do expect you to understand Indra works a little bit also Indra Drive, how to do a basic parameterization and also knowing a little bit about codices environment programming uh, would be uh, a good thing for this training. Okay, so if you want any additional uh, information, I will leave links about uh, programming, about HMI, about Indra Drive, Indra Works as well uh, in the description of the video, okay? So let's get started. I'll show you how to uh, find Indra Works. So the Indra Works version that I'm using here is called Indra Works ML uh, 14 V22 and how you can find it, you just go to like a search tool, search for Indra Works download and the very first link should take you to our web page. So the next thing you need to do is to look for the download tab that's available here. And then there are like several packages and different IndraWorks versions that are available. But the one you will need for this one is IndraWorks ML 14 v 22 Okay, so this version, it, it requires a license, but a 30 days uh, license is available, so you can install it for and use it for 30 days without a license on your computer, okay? So let's move forward. Once you download, you install IndraWorks on your computer. Um, you will have this view. Um, so let me close this library here and the first thing you need to do is to create a project. So let's right click on project and then of course you need to give it a name. So I will call it Indra Drive MLD and HMI. So that should be good for us. So I will confirm and of course you select like a destination folder where you want to save this project next thing you, we need to do is to search for the drive so you can right click on the project and do like a scan for a device um, in your list you need to select Indra drive ethernet and click on this right arrow to send it to the scan area and move forward you have two options here one is the network search it's kind of an automatically uh, done search or you can do an ip range search where you need to type like a, a range where your ip is located at for new indra drive firmwares you and newer indraworks versions as well you can use this network search option which is more convenient and easier to use so let's move forward my Indra works is already searching for drives and as you can see my Indra drive is connected and available and I'll finish it once it's done you will see the drive there and in the drive you will see that MLD is available right here um, so it's important to make sure that your MLD has permanent control over the drive. So if this option is not checked on your system, um, please do it. So once it's done, we can close those two tabs and we'll need to double click on logic. 
So for this demo, as I mentioned before, it's gonna be like a very simple uh, process. So I, I won't uh, go deep into the options. So let's just stay with the standard empty program. Let's hit okay. And once the environment is loaded into your project, uh, you will see that a PLC prog has been added, uh, but it has been added as a structured text. Uh, to make it more visual and a little easier for uh, many of you, I will just copy the name of this program and I will actually delete it. And what I will do is to create a new one. So let's come here and say add POU and POU stands for Program Organization Unit okay for those who don't know it and let me paste the name that I uh, of the program that I just deleted and I will keep it as a program and I will select letter so let's use it once it's added here uh, you see the letter environment, but before we move forward, I would like to show something important. Uh, let's double click on library manager. And it's important that you are familiar with this uh, PLC open lib. Of course, you don't need to know every single detail about it. Uh, but it's important to have like a, an idea of what is available. What we'll touch today, I won't go uh, over all the options. I just will mention that all the motion related function blocks are available under the motion uh, folder. OK, so what we we'll use today is actually the ML MC power and MC power helps you to enable the drive, which means like applying torque to the motor shaft. We'll also use MC move velocity, which will send a velocity command to the drive. Um, and you see your motor spinning on that specific velocity. Uh, and we'll also do MC stop. So again, it's gonna be very, very simple, very basic, nothing fancy here. Uh, so let me add, I will do like a vertical that group so we can look at both screens at the same time uh, and let's get started with the PLC programming let's right click on this network that is available here uh, and I'll do like insert empty box and I will click on the internal uh, question marks you should see this button showing up then again, you go to PLC open, you will open it, you look for the motion folder and the first function block we need is MC power, which is this one, we hit enter. So you see that the function block has shown, has been uh, included here with all its features and uh, inputs and outputs. The first thing we need to know is to create an instance of this function block because this function block can actually be used uh, by several axes in case your uh, project has different drives available. So uh, the same function block would be available for all of them, but we need to give it a name and it's called instantiate. OK, uh, I will use this uh, naming convention that I like you can use whatever you feel comfortable with okay so what i will do is i'll call it fb power uh, axis one okay so hit enter and okay i need to create an enable variable again uh, this is my uh, the the naming convention that i like that i feel comfortable with you can use whatever is better for you um, so I will call it B for boolean um, and enable 
x is 1 and enter you see this auto declare box showing up so my, the name that I gave the type and ok every time I hit ok you see that the variable will be automatically included in the declaration area so for axis uh, you need to give the identification of your axis or of the drive and by default you will always use axis 1 for the local drive and if you have more axes available being controlled by this main drive they will be axis 2, axis 3 and so on okay so for this one axis 1 so this is you cannot change this name and that's how it is uh, next thing let's make sure we delete the question marks here um, and let's add a network below next function block we'll add is the mc move velocity to send a move velocity command to the drive okay again right click uh, insert empty box click on the internal question marks the button will show up mc move velocity is right here click ok hit enter we need to give it a name in my case i'll call it fb move velocity axis one and hit enter auto declare shows up the type has been identified already so i just need to hit and uh, ok uh, and let's create another uh, boolean variable and this is going to be called execute move velocity x is 1 and type boolean again hit ok let's create a variable for velocity let me show you something different here if you hover over the, the name of the input you see this little box showing up and you can see in the very uh, right most right side you see uh, real and it means the type of the variable so the first ones I call B so for this one I'll call R for real um, velocity command x is 1 okay so type real but i'd like to have an initial initialization value for this one uh, otherwise it's gonna be zero so let me give you let's say that every time i download a new project or every time i change or every time i reboot my machine i want it to have like a, let's say 50 rpm as the default number so that's that's gonna be our default from now so i'll hit ok you will see that it has been added here with the number 50 right there correct so for acceleration deceleration we could also create a variable but just to make it uh, more straightforward for this demonstration i'll just give it like a hard code number so i'll say a thousand a thousand um, and x is one it's important to mention that all the units used here are taken from the parameterization of the drive so if you select like a linear motion with millimeters uh, and velocity uh, millimeters per second or per minute uh, and acceleration per second square uh, that's that's the value that it it will take okay um, and also if it's a rotary system it's going to be a radians or whatever you chose in the parameterization process again x is one uh, for the identification let's delete all the question marks and the next thing we will add is the stop so again add empty box click here and mc stop enter fb stop axis one 
enter the execute stop x is one delete question marks and here's one thing that you may have noticed the MC power has enable input and MC velocity and MC stop have execute and there is a difference okay enable uh, input means that uh, once I engage the the input once it's true it will remain um, av available or enabled if you turn the variable back to false uh, the drive will follow it uh, and will get disabled uh, whereas on the execute it's the opposite it's uh, just uh, uh, edge related which means once I enable or execute my motion command even if I turn this variable off the drive will continue moving and that's why we need to have MC stop otherwise we won't be able to stop the drive uh, or not the drive the axis of course the shaft uh, and for the stop the same thing I will need to execute the stop the drive will stop but even if it's still enabled doesn't matter if I send a new motion command it will start moving again because the the input is no longer going to be evaluated until you set it back to off and back to on again okay uh, okay so deceleration again hard-coded you could again create your own variable here uh, so x is one for the identification and well before we move forward let's create the list of variables that will be sent to the HMI later okay so how we do it is right click here you in application okay you right click on application you come to add and look for a symbol configuration so you add the symbol configuration you don't need to change anything here so finish it so symbol configuration is available but as you can see there is nothing available and the reason is because we never compiled or never built our code so let's check if everything is okay if there are no um, input errors here so complete zero errors zero warnings and now the information is available I will expand my PLC prog area and I will select the variables that I want to send to the HMI so I will send my enable my move velocity my execute stop and also my velocity command value okay so once it's selected next thing I need to do is to right click on the application and login login means send the code the compiled code to the motion controller so the motion controller uh, can start working uh, as we need it to do okay so move forward it tells me that there there is no uh, previous code it's the the motion controller or the MLD is empty would you like to continue yes I, I want to so click enter so once the download process is complete you should see it the application turns into red which means you are online but the PLC is not running yet what you need to do is right click here and say start so we start we should see now it becomes green and the same information can be seen on the bottom right right here it says run uh, if we double click on our PLC you see that it looks a little different it's because we are online now uh, so let's do a little something a little different now I will bring to this screen the overview of the drive so which is right here 
Let me close this one. So double click on this overview. Uh, you should see that my drive, my motor is in reference. Um, which means the motor knows, the drive knows exactly the, where the motor is located. So the, the motor is in reference. Uh, my drive is in AB and AB means that the bus is loaded, ready to enable and waiting for a bit like an enable command to come. And once I do that, you should see the AH or AF to become green, okay? So I will double click here. You see like this preparation or prepared value is available, both on the description area, on the um, uh, declaration area, and also on the programming uh, area. So what we need to do now is go into debug and say write values or to make it a little faster control f set f7 on your um, keyboard so let's do that control f7 so you should see my status change to enable my drive now becomes uh, ah means drive halt the motor has torque but it's not moving yet until I send a motion or a velocity command. So I'll double click on velocity command. Again, control F7. So we see that it changed to AF. And as you can see now, the position is changing and the velocity feedback is about 50, okay? Um, I just talked about uh, the, execu the execution versus the enable. If I disable this variable, double click here, set it to false, you see that the drive is still running. It never stops, okay? Until I come and execute my stop command through here. So stop was sent. I can disable it. I can uh, turn it back to false. You see that the drive is back to AH the position is no longer changing the velocity feedback is about zero uh, but the drive is still enabled until i disable this bit here so double click set it to false control f7 and then now it's uh, the drive is disabled again there is no torque anymore okay so that was it for the mld portion and what we'll do next is to add uh, a, an HMI in the project. Uh, and let's create a very basic HMI to, to control our inputs um, so we can control it from an external device, okay? So how we do it is, let me collapse the drive. I will right click on the project name and add I will search for the specific HMI that I have. In my case, I actually don't have a physical HMI here available right now, but we can create like a virtual environment, okay? So I will select this one, VR21. So I will select VR2109, which is, the, which is a good size. Um, and the IP address, of the destination. In this case, it's gonna be my computer, so localhost is good. Uh, we finish, you can select a vertical or a horizontal. Let's stick with horizontal. Let me finish it. I think it's a good moment for us to save our project, so let me save it. Make sure there is no asterisks in close to the name of the project on the top left. So the HMI is here. Before we continue, let's enable one very important feature on the HMI. We need to right click on Win Studio, go to Properties. Uh, we need to come to Viewer. And what we need to do here is to enable the virtual keyboard. And that will bring like a virtual keyboard when we need to type uh, like a velocity 
um, value for example okay so i will enable this and we'll leave it as a keypad is good enough and then i'll hit ok next thing we need to do is to create the communication uh, between the HMI and the drive so what we need to do is to come to communication right click on it we'll insert remove driver you see this BRWS this is the specific communication protocol available on the drive so I will select you see it's gonna be available in these selected drivers here and it shows up here right click on it new driver sheet okay double click on it let's give it a description it's just something to identify what is it about so i'll call it access one it doesn't matter what you put inside okay uh, and the station is the ip address of the host or the ip address of the controller in my case it's 192.168.11 uh, we need to give it a read trigger and what I will do, I will right click on this field and say insert tag and the system by default offers some different kinds of uh, variables so I'll search for boolean blink fast okay, I'll hit ok and I will also enable the write on tag on change so every time we change a variable the hmi will send that value to the drive otherwise it will just uh, remain idle so in order to do it we just need to hit one say one which means enabled in this case and i think we are good to go here let me save Uh, so once we save everything the drive is running you are connected to it you should see this process variable uh, menu showing up and you see your drive available here so you can you see logic so here's where your variables will be available and what you need to do is only uh, drag and drop let me see if I can do to all of them at the same time. Yes, we can. Um, so that's it. You just drag and drop. The variables have been added. We are just missing one. Let's add this one. So once uh, those variables have been added here, we need to save the project. So it will update on the HMI as well. If we go back to the project explorer and if we come to application variables, here's, here it is. So you see that the variables have been added automatically from our communication uh, table to the internal application variables table. Okay, so this is what we'll use. Um, before we move forward to the to the screen let me show you some interesting feature very basic but interesting you can right click here on win studio and say um, tools win studio database spy you can double click and if you go to your project boolean you see the variables that you just added so let's include this enable all right so you see that the quality says good just as a test i can right click on win studio and say start application so you see this uh, empty uh, screen showing up it doesn't matter uh, what we want to do is just to play with this value here and see if the communication is up and running so i will double click here write one once i hit here you see that my drive is enabled now until i come back here and say zero hit enter and the drive is back to ab meaning no longer uh, enabled okay so we know our communication is up and running the variables are working properly 
Next thing we need to do is to stop the HMI. Uh, so let's close application and right click again and say add Win Studio screen. Okay, so the screen is here. Again, click on the screen and say start screen. So it's gonna be your first screen when you execute this start application again, but it's empty right now. So let me double click on it. And what I will do is to create a push button. So select push button. Okay, it's here, double click. Um, one thing that's important before we move forward is that sometimes you see as I added the button and some tools showed up uh, on IndraWorks, sometimes it won't show up by default. Uh, so what you need to do is to come to view and then toolbars and select like a few Win Studio toolbars so you see them showing up as you click on the uh, uh, on the items added to the screen okay uh, let's give it a name so it's going to be called let me say enable axis one right uh, i will now come to this you see activate deactivate command i'll click on it and I will select toggle, toggle tag, and I will select my enable right here. So it's going to be on down. So every time I, I push it, it will change the value. Uh, on while, on, on up, not necessary for now. The next thing I want to do to make it visible. I want to change the color every time I the, the variable change. Um, so I will click on this activate deactivate color change. So it's configured for red and green. So red is disabled, green enabled, but I'll change it back to gray. Uh, and I will select the expression and my expression is again enabled. So it should be good. Let me save it. And if I start application, okay, so the application is here. And if I enable it, you see it becomes green. And again, my drive. So it becomes green, drive is enabled, click, it's off, drive is disabled, okay? So let's move forward and let's do it a few more times. Okay, so what I will do next is let me close this, uh, this uh, menu a little bit and I will copy this button once and I'll double click on it. Let me go back to the button option here on this drop down menu and we'll give it another name it's gonna be execute move velocity x is one let's go to the command so the command is no longer going to be a toggle because now we just need to write one and and zero again so once the command is taken we can write zero to that again so what we'll do here is set tag and we'll select on down we'll do move velocity and then on up we'll select again uh, we'll select reset tag and select the very same variable so every time i push it it will write zero when i release it i mean every time i push it it will, it will write one Every time we release it, it writes zero and it should be enough for us. Uh, before we finish it, we gotta go to colors and change the variable that where the color will be uh, changed. So it's, uh, it will change upon uh, move velocity here, okay? 
um, all right so we should be good here let me close this one again and I will copy and paste uh, this one and let me go back to name again to button and this is gonna be exec stop x is one let's go to the command so on down we want to write one to the stop on up we want to reset or write zero to the stop and let's come to colors and let's select our stop and if everything is good, if I did everything correct, I can save it. And once I save, you see that the, the application that's running already got updated. Let me enable. So drive enable, you can see it. I will execute. So the drive is actually moving, as you can see, with a velocity of 50 and if i stop it everything stops position is no longer changing uh, velocity feedback is about to zero but we are still missing the the, the velocity value right so let me go back to this area here i need to bring back my uh, toolbox and i will include a text input so let me do this and let me kind of align it. Uh, there is also an alignment option that you can use right here. Okay. So click here. The tag expression that we want is the, the now it's a real value. So we select the real under project and select our velocity command. We can put like a minimum and maximum value. So let's say zero uh, is allowed all the way to a thousand. Anything above that will not be accepted. Uh, and we use the, the virtual keyboard that we configured at the very beginning, if you remember it. Okay. Uh, let me see if everything should be good. Uh, I should be able to, to bring it here. I'll save it again. Every time we save the project, the screen gets saved and automatically updated. I can click here. My keypad will show up. So instead of 50, I want to do now 200. Confirm. My X is, let me bring it back here. Let me hide this toolbox so we can see we can see the overview better can we bring back the my virtual screen let me close this this menu as well uh, so again drive is enabled execute move velocity so the velocity is 200 my position is changing as you can see if i hit stop everything stops if i change my uh, velocity command to a thousand and five for example it won't be accepted because we have a limit of a thousand so let me click on that again let me say 500 instead i'll write it execute velocity command as you can see about 500 my velocity is changing until i stop it now everything is in stop mode and we are done with the the basic configuration the last thing we need to do is to send this screen to a real hmi as i also mentioned at the very beginning i don't have an hmi available here right now but i will still show you what should be done in order to send this screen to the hmi okay i will close this a this uh, digital or virtual hmi and I will come here and say stop, close application. And I will need to come to target, Win Studio target platform. 
and then I would need to have the IP address of the HMI on this field and if it's a new HMI, if it's the first time you are playing with it that may be necessary to install system files so this button will be available, you can just click on it it will install uh, some updated system files to your hardware once that process is done uh, oh, of course before that you need to connect by clicking on this connect button here but once the entire process here, connect and install, fi install system files is completed, you come to project and then you download uh, the, the project to your HMI and then you run and then you are done. The HMI will be running with your new screens. Uh, the communication, of course, the drive and the HMI must be in the same switch or in the same subnet. Uh, in order for them to communicate uh, that's it a very simple motion uh, as you can see we used pretty much uh, three function blocks and we are already able to have like a system moving of course there are many other features you can do uh, specific motion, uh, synchronization, point-to-point, -point, position commands, relative, absolute and so many other things are available. Uh, this MLD supports uh, slave drives uh, which means one, uh, one drive can support up to nine slaves so you can have a machine with up to 10 axes without having an external uh, motion controller also support IO extensions so you can have uh, IOs connected to it so you could control like external sensors and things uh, that's it I hope this video um, is useful for you I hope it will help um, and thanks for watching thanks for your patience uh, please if you like this video subscribe to the channel and share with your colleagues and I will see you in the next video. Uh, thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>